everybody and welcome back to our youtube channel my name is amara and my name is gospel if you're new on this channel we want to build you a warm welcome and we want to ask that you kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you know when we put content out and to all our returning subscribers it's always a joy to have you welcome back to today's conversation Yes. Do you know that your mindset about money has a way of influencing your attitude and your behavior around money? Some people see money as a tool. Some people see money as a means. Others see it as an end. So today, we will be looking at money mindset and your relationship. Let's talk about mindset for a minute. Like, what is mindset? Mindset is your view, your ideology, your perspective about money mm. and you know what this has a huge impact on how you treat money how you manage money uh, because a lot of times this is the reason why in a relationship people have issues around um, how they manage their finances because they haven't come to quite understand the other person's view or the, pers the other person's perspective about money and today we want to spend a bit of time just talking about and unpacking this whole money mindset and what does it mean right and please as you're watching this video maybe we're going through all of the different mindset just feel free to put yourself somewhere and let me also say that you could fall on the more than one category right there could be an overlap but it is really important that you go through this and let us know in the comment section what you think in terms of your perspective about money and it is important that you understand this because a lot of conflict in relationship is down to money management talking about conflict in relationships it's been found that money is the number one leading cause of stress in marital relationships and this is why we need to take some time to talk about money not just how we spend it but our perception about money maybe we can just start with the number one personality or trait about money that is big spenders you want to talk about that well big spenders these yes. guys are like go big or go home kind of people go big and spend big they spend big like mm. they go way all out they're not looking at how much you're spending these guys are like the pissetters. Mm. You know, when you talk about keeping up with the Joneses, these mm. guys are the Joneses they themselves. Are the Joneses. <laughs> yes, so. They are the Joneses themselves. And they are all about the trend, what is really happening now in terms of technology. They want to be the first to, to, to lay hands it, yeah. on the new technology. Mm -hmm. They want to be the first to test run a car. They want to be the first to have like a new gadget. Mm. They are just the pay setters. So you're saying that big spenders are keen about spending money. They don't care. They, they see money as a tool, something that is acquired to be spent. Let's spend it. Yes. You only live once. Definitely. So you have to spend it. I don't know how many of you have heard the word YOLO. You only live once. These guys are in that category. Yeah. They just say, you know what? It's life. Let's leave it big. But do you, I don't also think that there is anything wrong with spending money because no. obviously money is for spending it gives you options it gives you opportunity to solve your problems but the issue now is are you supposed to spend everything you make mm. so big spenders don't see any problem with spending if they have something they want to buy it doesn't matter the amount yeah. that is sold as long as they like it they are going for it they don't wait for you to do sales they don't wait for you to drop the price before they go for it. As long as they like it, they go for it. Yeah. And if you're in a relationship with a big spender, sometimes wow. they can lavish you with wonderful gifts. They buy you things. And you're wondering, how much did you buy? They say, don't worry about the it's money. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. <laughs> it's about making sure that you have the best. Yes. These guys don't like, I mean, they don't go for bargain mm -hmm. items. They, they go for high ticket items. And... Yeah. They don't really care like you said they don't really care how much it is mm. and they, they are willing to spend on it and these guys take a lot of risk with mm. investment they see something they love the idea they put their money there mm -hmm. they're not checking the risk they're not checking you know what are the pros what are the cons as long as they love it they spend it mm. now it is important that you moderate there's moderation 
in relationship because this could be a potential issue in yeah. relationship before we talk about moderation yeah. let's look at the opposite of big spenders which yeah. are the big savers oh yes i think i fall that's into the second that category one because i you like so. saving money man oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always analyze. Um, sometimes, yeah, of course you do. Definitely. You always want to see why do we have to spend money on this? How much is it? And then you are pressing the calculator and Which all is of very that. good. So big savers or savers are those who want to save so much, as much as possible. If they want to take risks, maybe they want to invest their money. They have to be sure that the risk level is low. They have to be sure that their money is not going to um fly away mm. if i will use the word fly away it's not so gonna fly <laughs> take wings and fly so they they, they are vast to risk mm -hmm. i would say and and big savers find a sense of fulfillment in saving money so they want to check how much is coming into the account maybe they want to check what percentage are they going to save this mm -hmm. month they find that sense of fulfillment after a while they see the, the amount of money they've saved in the account. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think these guys take their time. Mm. They are very structured. They have a process. They have a system mm -hmm. to how they disburse their finances. Mm -hmm. They cannot just wake up and see a potential and they just want to put their money there. Mm. They want to check what are the pros, what are the cons. They want to calculate every single aspect and play every single scenario before they put their money there. Yeah. And, you know, there are people in relationships like this, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes people say, oh, you're being overly stingy. You mm -hmm. know, you don't spend, you don't like to mm -hmm. give out, you're always holding on to cash. You don't want to be spending and all of that. What are you going to do with all this money mm -hmm. later on? Now, these guys want to have the certainty about their future. Mm -hmm. And they feel that, you know, money would buy them some sort of security mm -hmm. and it's okay if you yeah. have somebody like this in a relationship because you know sometimes people feel term. exactly they're always long term in terms of their mindset about finances it's not about what we want to buy now it's about how useful would this be to us mm -hmm. 5 10 20 years down the line obviously what you're saying is they focus more on what they need mm. and they try to prioritize the future to, Absolutely. to be sure that in the future they don't have to depend on people that they, they, they want that security absolutely that everything is sorted the challenge with this approach or mindset is that sometimes they might see money as an end mm. rather than see money as a means a means through which you can um, solve problems absolutely so rather than hoarding money they, they if they are not careful they will go into that frame of hoarding money mm. what gives them a sense of fulfillment is how much they've accumulated rather than see money as a tool which they will use in solving problems. What's the point of having accumulated wealth when you have people around you mm -hmm. who need support, you have things you need to solve or problems you need to solve at the moment. Yeah. So there, there is need for that balance. Yeah, where we, you there is. Yeah. There is need for that mm -hmm. balance. But I, I think fundamentally, the reason why we're having this conversation mm -hmm. is that a lot of people in relationship do not come to terms in to, let me say, they don't appreciate the other person's perspective about money mm. and it's i would say that 50 percent of the conflicts in relationships would have been eliminated mm. if you can understand the mindset of the mm. other person yeah and it's important that if you know that this person is a big spender for instance or this person is a big saver for instance you would be able to have certain conversations and moderate that and i think that's something we would explore later on in our conversation today yeah so the third one is the shoppers. Yeah. The shoppers, shoppers, the shoppers. It seems to me that there are so many, if I want to categorize, oh, I don't want no. to be excessive. But no. I think more, we have more women who are shoppers as compared to men. Don't say that. Yes, that's the truth. There are some men who can fall into this category. Mm -hmm. Some men are big shoppers. So tell us more about big shoppers because ah. I don't think I fall into that category. <laughs> tell me. Well, I think, <laughs> I think shoppers kind of develop an emotional satisfaction from spending money. From shopping. Yes, they just want to spend the money. <laughs> like, you know what? Like, the savers save the money and they keep it for something. The shoppers want to spend the money. Definitely. And there is a lot of emotional attachment mm. to people who tend to mm. shop a lot. They can't resist mm. spending. You know, they can't resist just going out there and buying what they love to buy. 
And the problem is that sometimes they buy things they, they don't need and they buy things they don't need. Yes. It's just the sense of satisfaction that comes from buying things. Yes. That's all they're concerned about. You see, with these guys, um, they are easily hooked in by marketers. Mm. You know, when if you if you're able to market a product right mm. to shoppers, they would buy. Mm. And then after buying, because it's all about the emotional hype, mm. right? And after buying it, they kind of asking themselves why did why? i even buy that do what i even I... need it exactly and the point is it can even be an addiction you it know? can it can yeah. so it you're can. always surfing the net looking for something or yes. going out there buying you know for me i only go to shop to buy things that i need yeah but you know the thing is it's also important that if you have gotten married or if you're in a relationship with someone who is a shopper mm you need to have these conversations and try to moderate these things because mm. i i knew someone who had two red shoes mm. and i went into the shop to buy another pair without realizing that she had a pair mm. and when i asked questions around why do you have three pairs of shoes same color and she said well one is a stiletto, the other one is a wedge, and then the other one is a block heel. And it's like, it doesn't make any difference. It's all the same color. Mm. And she said, you know, for certain kinds of outfit, you would need this certain kind of shoe and all mm. of that. But I feel that she was only trying to rationalize it because at the time, it didn't really make sense to have the same shoe in three colors. Mm. And when she was purchasing the last one, she didn't realize she had exactly the same shoe mm. in her closet. And that's because... You know, when you are drawn to emotional shopping, you do not really keep tab with what is being spent and how you're spending and what you even buy. And sometimes you end up with things you don't necessarily need. Yeah. And the problem with that is you go into um, a mode where you spend more than you earn. That could even put you in debt, which will lead into the next phase of our conversation. The next group of people in terms of money personality, those who are called debtors hmm. now with debtors right they spend money without thinking mm. they just spend 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 for the sake of spending so money. if you're saying they spend, spend spend what's the difference between debtors and big spenders now with debtors the issue is that they don't even keep track of what they're doing mm. and in some instances they spend beyond what they can afford mm. that's the thing about big well debtors with big say uh, well with big spenders mm -hmm. it's, a, it's slightly different because they might be spending way more um than they are supposed to spend in terms of their budgets right but it's within their but income, it's within their income. Mm -hmm. but with debtors they spend beyond what they can afford and they don't even keep tab of their expenses sometimes these guys draw themselves into a cycle of debts Mm. And it's very challenging because they come to a point where they just take that on as part of their lives. You mm. know, debt is a part of my life. Anyways, I just have to spend this money because I have to. They don't have a control mm. about, you know, where and how they spend their money. They just keep spending. And sometimes they take certain risk and these risks are not calculated. Mm. They just do it for the sake of, I just have to spend this money and off. Mm. Adding to that, I think the other difference is that they spend from what other people have given them hmm. so they take loan if you know someone who always comes around you to ask for please do you have some yeah. money i need some loan you give them loan they don't return it they, they constantly ask, they keep coming they keep coming and you're wondering why are they coming for loan and sometimes they use the money to buy things they don't need like you said they always go for extra credit cards they have yeah. they keep spending like you said, it becomes a cycle of constant debt. And the problem with this is that it's difficult to have a hold on their finances. Debtors are the people you see going into um, different addictions like betting, like gambling. gambling, using their money for things that they are not supposed to use their money for because it fuels that their addiction. Hmm. And if you're married to someone or you're in a relationship with someone who is a debtor, mm. then the person comes in to your life and creates an unusual financial burden on you. Absolutely. I will tell you that this point has created mm -hmm. massive marital dysfunction and so many people have quit their relationships just because they are in a relationship with their debtor. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, if you're single and you're listening to this, one of the critical questions to ask when you are in courtship with someone is, you know, what's what's your value? Mm, um, where What's your net worth? Um, do you have any debts? Mm. Be very specific because sometimes when you ask the question, what's your net worth? Then some people say, oh, I didn't know you were asking about that. And then you're already in a relationship with them or you're already married to them. So it is really important that you ask, you know, have you got any debts? Have you got any, you know, student loans? Have you mm. got any what credit card debts? Mm. Just be very specific about the questions that you ask. Are you owing anybody? Even if it's a soft loan, family loan, whatever kind of loan, how much do you owe? You know, where are you in terms of your credits? You know, what's your credit worthiness? What's your credit rating? It's really important you're asking those critical questions mm. about that. And the other thing I would also say for um, people who are already married um, is to, you know, ask, you know, how much can you spend without your spouse's permission, for instance? Mm. Because some people don't even, they've not even had those conversations. And you find that your spouse goes out and he comes back with a, with a high ticket item. So it is really important that those things are, are, are things that you sort of talk about. Because if you are married or in a relationship with someone who is a debtor mm. then um that kind of brings up a lot of red flags and and some conversations need to be had around that yes you said someone who is single can also ask those kind of questions sometimes it looks like probing yeah it looks like you're being intrusive um you're prying into someone's privacy so it, you might not really have the opportunity to start asking those questions especially when the person is not forthcoming the person is not comfortable to share those Kind of information with you i would say look at the person observe the person's pattern pattern mm. of spending pattern of borrowing mm. if you check the pattern you will see there will be a red flag there is something that would should uh, be so clear to you that yes. the way this guy is handling money or this lady is handling money shows a sign that this could be someone in debt absolutely but maybe you also look at do they ask you for help do they ask for loan you can do a test and see if they're able to give back when they ask for such loan. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's talk about the final group mm -hmm. of people. These are the investors. Wow. <laughs> this is a good group to be in, right? <laughs> and and it's, it's a place that we all aspire to be, right? <laughs> Maybe, not necessarily. <laughs> and some people are already there. Not necessarily because... Why is it not necessarily because well, if, if you... So the investors, okay, maybe we'll talk about the investors. Yes. Because the investors are those who they have, they have eyes for investments. Yeah, no, all but, they but think the, about is investments. The thing about these guys is that they are so aware about money. Yes. They're so conscious about money. And that's why I said, you know, everyone should aspire to get to this point because you know, money is like you said, is a means, mm -hmm. right? But you don't just leave to spend everything. You should be leaving to have financial freedom. Mm. And with investors, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that, you know, a lot of times they have a, their eye on investments because it's an opportunity for them to have like a passive sort Same. of thing going, yeah. right? So, and that's why I say, you know, a lot of people should aspire to get to this point where it's not just about just spending the money mm -hmm. for the sake of keeping the money for yourself because, you know, investors will say, if you have money in the bank, it's dead money if that money isn't working for you, right? Exactly. And and this is where the investors come in because these investors are like, you know what, put your money to work, get your money to work really hard mm -hmm. and let it yield because you don't, you, you wouldn't always have the energy that mm -hmm. you have now, mm -hmm. right? You won't have this energy, say, in the next 10, 20 years. You wouldn't have that. So you get your money to... And this is where the investors come in. The investors are always thinking about, you know, how can I put my money to work? They are so aware about their money. And it's not just, you know, getting money for now, but it's about checking what's their current standing financially and what can we do in terms of investments. Yeah, the balance I wanted to bring there is that sometimes investors are so keen on investment they forget the reality of now. Yeah. Where they have problems to solve, people have needs around them, and they are all fixated on investments. Absolutely. So, in as much as it's good to invest, you have to also think about the balance. The balance is have short-term, long-term, medium-term, and long-term goals. So, you have a plan in terms of investment, then you have to also solve your immediate problems. Mm -hmm. So that you're not married to someone who is all about investment, and the family is suffering. Person well, is not thinking about. You can't, you can't, you can't be investing, and the family is suffering. Some people do see, that. So that no, no, no. What I mean this is, is where I kind what, of... what I mean is they've invested, mm -hmm. and it's a long-term investment. So 
everything coming in is channeled towards investment. As the money is coming in, investment. So, but they have immediate needs that need to I be solved. That's yeah. just what I mean. Um, but the point is, no matter where you find yourself, there is always a middle ground. Sure. You could take the positive side of the spenders, positive side of the savers, mm -hmm. positive side of the um, shoppers. Yes, it's good to shop like this for your family. Positive side of the debtors. When your loan or your debt is about investment, you so, take loan to invest. You take. You, you, yeah, that's good. And then you clear it. You don't, you don't stay you there. You don't stay there yeah. you, because you invest to clear it. And then you have investors, which is a good place. So wherever you find yourself, it's good to understand your mindset about money, understand the mindset of your spouse or your partner or someone you want to go into a serious relationship with. And then look at how that mindset could also impact either positively or negatively on the relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how this can have an impact on mm -hmm. relationship. I, I think the first impact is on communication. Um, if you guys have different views or different mindset about money, you will constantly have conflicts about it. That's if there is no balance. And, and let me say, let me say that you know, opposite attracts mm -hmm. because a, a lot of times people say, "Oh, I wish I married." Um, a, spe spend. a spender like myself <laughs> or, or someone can say oh I, I wish i married someone who is like who have an investing an investor mindset and all of that the truth is that it, it's fantastic if you get married to someone who has the same mindset as you what tends to happen is that you have the same strength mm -hmm. and it's great because you have the same strength you guys see eye to eye on so many things however you both have the same weakness mm. <laughs> you both have the same weaknesses and you know, it's it's about the balance. It's mm. about the balance. And, you know, sometimes you find yourself that people don't always marry the same. You know, yeah, they say like opposite us. attracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you are more... I'm more of the this, this saver than the investor. Uh, yeah. Oh, now you're, you're taking on investor. Okay. <laughs> you're more of the so, spender uh, than the uh, shopper. No way. <laughs> you're saying this on... Anyways, the truth is, there's yeah, always, always a balance. balance. There's I, always a balance. I compliment the other yeah, side yeah that's there's yeah. always a balance and then I mean, you compliment the other side you no know, you're making it look like i spend <laughs> no, money. no 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 that's not what i'm saying what i'm Just trying to mind. say what i'm trying to say is that when it comes to how we are mm -hmm. i'm more of a conservative yes you are yeah you're more absolutely the, you know, absolutely which which could be a negative thing in itself yeah. if there is no balance yeah which is why you have to come to that point where two of you will look at your minds mm -hmm. and creates the best mindset that works for the family yeah no you 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 let me let me kind of there's a caveat to what you mm -hmm. just said let me say that you might not change the mindset of your spouse mm -hmm. i think it's really important that you prioritize um, a unified decision you might have varied mindsets and mm -hmm. it's really important because you can't change anyone you can, you can have a view but about you, money but you can come to a compromise yes that's what i'm that's saying you know have a unified front about mm -hmm. what you want to do with money and that's why i said you know how much can you spend without your spouse's permission and um, if you've not had those sort of conversation where someone comes back with a high ticket item that could be a potential room a, a place mm -hmm, for conflict for conflict you know how come you're spending this and if for example you're very conservative you're very analytical about money then it's going to be a a big issue for both of you yeah. so I, I think that there has to be a lot of com uh, con uh, conversation, conversation around it around money and having that agreement on what you do with your finances this is where financial goals come in yes this is where budgeting comes in so for instance if i am a conservative person in the family and you are more of the outgoing person when it has to do with money you're you're not too fixed with it so if we have a budget, if we have a plan, now it doesn't matter who disburses the fund. It doesn't matter who has the money management or financial management for the whole. As long as those indicators are met, those yeah. key things that we want to do as a family, we've been able to do them. So you are portion. Yeah. Um. Sorry. So you are portion a percentage of your income into different things that you've agreed beforehand yes that saves everyone the conflict of yeah. why did you do this why did you do this? absolutely that's absolutely. how it, i see it mm -hmm. it should work for everyone true 
I totally agree with that. But if there's no agreement, you know, just picking up on what you said, mm-hmm. if there's no agreement, then financial goals become a point of conflict mm-hmm. uh, because you don't have a unified front in terms of what you want to achieve um, mm-hmm. together. So it's really important that you have that unified front. And another another aspect I think is really, really important to touch on is around financial habits. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you're in a relationship with someone who has got, you know, poor financial habits. And this potentially creates a lot of friction because mm-hmm. they don't understand why you have to conserve the cash um, so much, why you have to be so detailed about what was spent, why, why did you spend um, a pound extra, or why did you spend 10 pounds extra, or whatever it is, currency that you use. And they are very keen about calculating to every single penny, right? Mm-hmm. You don't get it because they have they have the habits, right? And if you if you have conflicting habits in terms of finances, and you say, oh well, it's just a pound, no, oh, it's just five pound. Why do you have to make a fuss about? It's just you know, it's just it's just for that individual, it's not just. Mm. So it, it is really important that you align in terms of your habits. And if you find that you're in a situation where you have a poor financial habit, maybe this is where you have to sort of win yourself off you know, the pleasures or the things that take away the money mm. and, you know, ask yourself critical questions around, can I be financially free if I continue on this trajectory? Because um, it's really important that you understand that you need to build healthy habits, you know, in your relationship because it's not sustainable if you don't have healthy habits. You know, it's, it's you're just going to be under a lot of strain, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure all the time. So, and I think this is really important and an aspect to have some serious conversation. Serious around. And solid point is made there. And I also want to add to the, to that. You need to be accountable. Hmm. Because if you have a poor habit or financial habits that you know you're struggling with, you, you can't see things without buying them, your spouse becomes your accountability partner. It means you guys have to put some boundaries. You have to put some checks. You have to put some measures that would help cause Strain, strain that will help constrain how you spend and when you spend so for me if you have negative habits that will deplete your finances maybe you're a big spender and you've been trying to curtail it or you're a debtor you take loans you don't give back or you don't even make plans to pay back your loan because you keep spending and spending i think it's high time you started um putting a kind of measure that would stop you from living in that habit you one of the things you might want to do is to uh, get an accountability partner your spouse could be your accountability partner Mm -hmm. you need to be open-minded you have to be transparent one of the things you also have to do is that you would um, ensure that before you spend any money you have to you know let your spouse be aware of it Mm -hmm. maybe you might decide to hand over the issues around financial management to your spouse because that person is more competent, more diligent in that area. It doesn't have to be a man or a woman. Whoever in the family is more competent should handle issues around finance. And that saves you a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is when your take home is coming, hey, honey, this is how much I've made. This is how much Mm -hmm. we want to use it for. Maybe you take some. Mm-hmm. You win yourself a bit. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Maybe you control a, a, maybe ten percent of the income. Yeah. You can keep it to yourself and do the spending. All of a sudden, you would develop that muscle. It's discipline absolutely. because you've not been disciplined over time. You've developed that habit, and if you have what we say, we talk about growth mindset. There is no habit you cannot overcome. It's That's just true. that you've not created the plan and instilled the principles that will help you to overcome. It. Those. Yeah. And, and finally, one, one other point to touch on is that um, the issues around uh, mindsets could also affect or impact on trust levels mm. in the relationship. Because if you find that your spouse is a big spender, for instance, um, and over time you've, you know, you've watched them and they've, been able, they've not been able to keep to you know, the budget, for instance, um, in, a, in the months or whatever plans that you had set in place, there is a tendency not to trust that person Mm. with financial decision Um, and there has to be a conversation and like we said earlier you need to build financial competence Um, and i will say that it's not just for somebody who is the big saver 
in the mm. family. Don't put the burden of financial management on the big saver or the person who is more conservative, like you said. Mm -hmm. I think it's high points uh, that couples started thinking about financial competence mm. and how you can upskill yourself, like you said, how you can win yourself off bad habits, how you can take on, you know, better, healthier habits and build your financial freedom because it's really, really important. You know, the Bible says that, you know, you must leave a good inheritance for your children and your children's children. Uh, and it is really important that you do that because if you don't have, um, if you're not disciplined financially, you would not be able to leave a good inheritance. In fact, you will not even be able to enjoy an inheritance, not even to talk of living a good inheritance. And I think it is really important that we think about that. Marriage is to be enjoyed. But you know what? When you have money problems, it stresses, it puts a lot of strain in the relationship. And it's high time that we minimized, you know, the stress, the strain of money palava in our relationship. Money issues in our relationship. And... What we are saying in effect yeah. is, it's not like you're going to have all the money in the world. It's not even about how much you amass. Because sometimes people mm. think, if I make more, then I will be free. If I make more, mm. we will be happy. If I make more, then we'll save more. No, it doesn't work that way. With what you have, you have to develop the discipline such that when you have more, you'll be able to utilize the more effectively. And that's why we talk about Parkinson's law. The law states that income, expenditure will always rise to meet income or even overtake income. So mm. what do you do? Break the Parkinson's law, maintain your standard of living and your standard of spending yeah. even when your income increases. increases. That's where you have enough mm. to save. You have enough to create that financial freedom that you need as a family. The reason for us talking about this, even for a single audience, is that you need to start talking, discussing issues around your money mindset and the mindset of your intending spouse, even before you get married. Don't wait until marriage to start discussing money issues because at that point, it might be a bit late. So start now thinking, how do I even manage money? How do I look at money? If you don't have the financial literacy that is required to manage money effectively, that may be an aspect of competence that you might need to upskill yourself before you think about getting married. Well, I think we have said quite a lot um, in this video and I hope you found value listening to this. And please, we would love to hear your comments. We'd love to read your comments. So if you want to please kindly type in the comments what you take away or maybe there are aspects that we didn't quite cover or maybe you're watching us now you're one of the people in the financial space and there are a few tips that you want to share with our community please do put it in the comment section we'd love to read your comments give this video a thumbs up and please share if you find this useful for someone else just pass on and spread the joy as well and let's all build together let's all be financially free and if this is your first time and you forgot to hit the subscribe button, now is the time to do that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and just click the bell next to it so you know when we put content out. And until the next episode, it's goodbye from us.